We are at one of our neighborhood parks. We call this the park with the pond because it's a park playground and there's a pond. <laughs> and the other park in our neighborhood, well, we have several, but the two main ones, the other one we call it the park with the tunnel slide because it's a park with the tunnel slide. But they decided to come to this park today, huh? Are you on the seesaw? They recently redid this park. It's like brand new. It's Red Shop Island. Yeah. Grayson watched Inside Out the other day at kindergarten because they're learning about emotions and feelings and they played clips from the Disney movie Inside Out and so now he's super into it even though he's never seen the movie before. We'll have to watch that movie sometime, huh? But it's dead. Kids are still in school. Yeah, so we have the whole park to ourselves. It's a beautiful mid-October day. <laughs> it's October like 17th, so it's pretty late into October. And we're getting this just little bit of warm days, which is really nice. It's like 60s, mid-60s right now, and it feels amazing. Um, I'm videoing because, well, we're at the park, so that's always fun to see. But also, in a little bit, I'm going to go to Grayson's kindergarten, and I have parent-teacher conferences today. So, this is kind of new, but kind of not. They had this at preschool, but it was just like a phone call conversation. This time, I'm actually going into the school, and it feels more legit because it's like in the elementary school, like... The other ones in preschool, they were like, you really don't need to do parent-teacher conferences, but this one, like, they require it. So, I'm going to go. I told him to come with eat me, but he'd rather stay home and watch the kids. So, I'm going by myself. It's only for 15 minutes. I'm just so curious what she's going to say. I already know Grayson is very bright and smart. I mean, he's already reading, um, but I'm worried about what, he's, what she's going to say behavior-wise because he does do some weird things i mean he's five so just imagine what five-year-old weird things that five-year-olds do and that's grayson so it'll be very interesting to see like what she says so hopefully it's all good things i'm also hoping to get some advice on what i can do with him in terms of his intellectual ability because he's so smart and he picks up on things so fast so i feel like i should put him in some kind of tutoring because he's like a sponge and i want to take advantage of this right now but i'm just not quite sure maybe she'll have some ideas or maybe not so i have that coming up also i wanted to recap you guys yesterday i took avery for her um head adjustment appointment and it was good and bad <laughs> so we went good she's making awesome progress they um, have seen a lot of change to her head shape which is good it means the helmet's working also good is they told us we have six weeks left in this helmet which is amazing it's awesome to see like an end date i guess the next appointment they're going to take update pictures so we can kind of compare her first pictures to updated pictures now the bad part about the appointment yesterday was they did say that they are going to recommend her to have a second helmet and it honestly caught me off guard and I kind of shut down as soon as they said that because I did not think we would need a second helmet and it just kind of sent me reeling. The clinician that I talked to was a new one. I hadn't met her or um, been seen by her yet and she was kind of like, oh, this was just like writing on the wall. Like this was always going to be a recommendation because of how severe her head is. Like there's no way that just 10 weeks of wearing a helmet would fix it. And she was like, they didn't tell this to you? And I said, no, I had no idea. When I went in for my first like appointment to even see if she needed a helmet, they were like, oh, some people get a second helmet, but it's very rare. Usually, okay, I'm watching. Usually it's like 15%. So like not a lot of people get it. But apparently Avery is rare. And yeah, they are gonna recommend a second helmet. So they said we can talk in more detail at the next appointment. And of course, once we get the updated pictures, we'll really see how she's looking. But I think they just kind of told me that just so I can kind of wrap my head around it. Of course, I'm disappointed that that's their recommendation because that just means a longer amount of time in the helmet. I was thinking she'd have it off by Christmas. I don't know if that's, a thing that's probably not gonna be a thing now if we decide to go with the second helmet and also it's a whole nother payment 
So the first helmet we had to pay almost $500. So if we get another helmet, it's another $500 that we have to pay. Our insurance pays for a lot of it. It's $2,100 without insurance. So our insurance paid a lot of it, but again, that's money just coming out of Anthony and I's pocket. So I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm kind of leaning towards not doing it. Anthony's leaning towards doing it. It's hard because they get you with the mom guilt and they're like, okay, well, you can only do the helmet up until age two. And then after they turn two, the, hel the head stops growing in the helmet. Like you can't fix the head shape. So, and they're not pressuring me to do it. They keep saying it's totally up to you and whatever you want to do. But of course there's like internal mom guilt because it's like, okay, if I don't do anything about her head, what if later on in life she has issues because I didn't go ahead and pay an extra $500 for a second head or for a second helmet. So it was just disappointing to hear. Uh, we're gonna wait until we get more information. Um, more should come from the next appointment. We go back in two weeks on Halloween, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, just disappointing at that appointment yesterday. I, I was just totally taken off guard by it. Didn't even vlog yesterday because I just was so sad <laughs> about how that appointment went. So we'll see how it goes, but it's looking like we might have to do another helmet, which just means a lot more time of her looking like she's in a helmet. So I'm kind of sad about that, but I'm excited for parent teacher conferences and to see how Grayson's doing in school. This is kind of like my only snapshot I get of how he is in the classroom because I just don't hear much from his teacher. I'm sure I could email her as much as I want, but no news is good news, right? And they do parent-teacher conferences in the spring, but it's usually only for kids that like really need it. Um, so I don't think we'll have another parent-teacher conferences until he's in first grade next year. So we will see how that goes and I'll keep you guys updated. But for now, we're just playing at the park. Porter's swinging. Grayson is somewhere up there and I lost him. Oh, there he is. Porter had picture day yesterday. Did you have fun at picture day? He said he smiled so big, so I can't wait to see what his picture looks like. And then he has preschool again tomorrow. So that'll be fun. Are you excited? Grayson's going down the fireman's pole. Woo! Nice! Mm -hmm. Are you guys having fun? That's big wheels right there to put bottle. Mm -hmm. The boys are loving throwing rocks and sticks into this pond. <laughs> also, side note, I just take it for granted, but maybe some of you don't get to see pretty fall colors. Look at these beautiful yeah. fall colors on these trees. <coughs> oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> Usually or every year around Anthony's birthday is like peak leaf peeping time. I think that's what it's called. Anthony's birthday is October 21st, so it's always a little past mid-October and the colors are so pretty. So we're just enjoying the sun and the fall colors and throwing some rocks in the pond. That's not and Mm-hmm. Also, Avery is home taking a nap and Anthony's working from home. So don't worry, I didn't just leave her home alone. <laughs> We're just enjoying this little bit of time while Avery's napping, which she has been taking horrible naps. She's been taking like 30 minute naps and it's killing me. <laughs> so hopefully that passes soon. I think it's cause she's teething and could be six months sleep regression. I've had this lion toy since Grayson was a little boy. And all my kids have loved this lion toy. I don't know what it is about it, but they all love it. So I am back from parent-teacher conferences with Grayson 
It went amazing. Oh, Avery's going to be grumpy. I'm going to have to put her down to bed, and then I will update you all on parent-teacher conferences. Okay, sorry about that. Avery, as soon as I turned on the camera, decided she wanted to go to bed. So I put her down to bed, and now it's just me, Anthony's, with his friends in the basement. They're playing some game. But I wanted to tell you guys how parent-teacher conferences went. It went so, so good. It's basically like I thought Grayson is very advanced. He's very smart for his age. If you don't know, Grayson is five. He's in kindergarten and he is already reading books. He can count, I mean, to any number you want him to. He knows all of his letters, all of his numbers, all of his shapes, all of his colors. Like he knows all of it. Like we tested him when he was in preschool and they said academically he was at a first grade level. That's just how smart he is. Like, I'm not making it up. I went to go meet with his teacher, and she said he is so smart and so bright. They did a bunch of tests. I'll show you guys. They did a bunch of tests to test, test to test, to see where he was at with his math and with his literacy. I guess those are the two main things they were testing on. And so I'll show you guys what she gave me. So this is Grayson's... Um, evaluation so this is where <clears throat> he should be by half a year by mid-year this is where he should be at the end of the year and this is just like extended goals so like if they meet these then these are the goals that they go to next and as you can see Grayson is either at the end or at the extended um, goal for all of his um, math this year so they do things like counting to 30 by ones and tens obviously he can count she said she made him count to 120 but she knows she, he could have gone faster than that Felix no no <laughs> and counting to 100 by ones and tens so after he was counting to 120 she said she tried to get him to count by fives and she said he would do that except he um, she had to keep telling him like, okay, what's another five? What's another five? What's another five? Instead of him just like going off and being like five, 10, 15, 20. Um, counting forward, beginning from a, a random number. So she would do like, okay, start counting from the number 22. And he'd have to be like 23, 24. He can do that. No problem. Writing numbers. He can already write numbers. Um, counting objects like counting um, circles, he can do that. And then um, again, just like grouping items. Sorry, my nails are like so chipped. So basically with all of the math, he is at the extended learning goals. I mean, this kid begs Anthony and I to give him addition and subtraction problems for fun. Like that's what he likes to do for fun. Yeah, she said he was very smart in math. And then she went over just like his social development, which I was kind of nervous about because while Grayson is very smart academically, he's not the best socially. Um, he has some issues, which we've known. But she said he is actually really good. She said he observes the rules, he follows directions. She said he's a big rule follower, which we knew about this. Um, she did say that he's working on regulating his emotions. She said the best she could describe it was he just has really big emotions for his tiny body, which is totally Grayson. She was like, yeah, anytime something doesn't go right, like if and anytime something has a malfunction, Grayson has a meltdown, which happens here too. If our Alexa stops working, if the Wi-Fi is down, Grayson has meltdowns. So the teacher has been working with him. She said she has seen improvement. He is getting better. She has him problem solve a lot with her they work on um, taking deep breaths which we do here as well um, identifying emotions problem solving to get to um, the correct emotion different things like that I did ask his teacher like how is he with uh, other kids and she said he was great she said there are times where he wants everybody to be doing the same thing that he's doing so he'll get frustrated if they're doing their own thing but Grayson does that with Porter too so that wasn't surprising um, so this next paper, I'll show you. She had Grayson write his numbers from 0 to 20, and she was impressed by that. Um, I guess a lot of kids his age can't even write to 20, so that was good. And then these are all of his letters. So uppercase, and then this is 
lowercase and he knows all of his uppercase and lowercase letters. If you look at the date, this is actually from the kindergarten assessment that they did over the summer. Um, he knew it all back then, of course. Then these are their sight words. So um, I've explained this before, but sight words are words that you can't really um, sound out. You just kind of have to know what they are by looking at them and memorizing them. And they're supposed to know 40 by the end of this year. And as you can see, they are supposed to test them every month and Grayson knows all of them. So these are all the words that they're going to learn this year and Gray knows them all. <laughs> all of them and then um, they were doing spelling and Grayson did all of them <laughs> you could do them all um, she said with reading obviously Grayson's already reading um, most of the kids this year their goal is to just know their letters and Grayson's already reading so she said he's very advanced in that the big plus that I got out of that meeting is even though Grayson is very advanced for his age it's not holding him back and they are able to work with him where he's at and um, give him extended learning goals so that's kind of like what I showed you with the first paper and basically they are just going to dip into first grade work and um, have Grayson do more advanced work um, so he'll be doing the same activities that his classmates are doing. Um, Grayson will just have a modified version and it'll be just be harder for him. So she was giving me exa an example, like in math, they do a lot of math games. And one of the games that they do is they have a dice and they'll roll a dice and then they'll record what number they have. And then they'll roll the dice again and then they'll record that second number and then it'll be the first dice plus the second dice equals what? And then they have to add it up. With Grayson, because he's so smart, he'll get two dice that he'll have to, he'll have two dice and then add and then two dice. So it'll just be harder for him so that he can get um, more challenged. Or um, with reading, um, gr like, most kids, their task is going to be read the sentence, but Grayson's already reading sentences. So his task is going to be interpret what the sentence is saying. Like, don't just read the words. Like, what is it saying? What is the picture showing? What is the point of the story? Like going more in depth about it. Um, she also said show that he will probably be on like his own island, I guess, of... Um, book difficulty so she'll give him books that are appropriate to his age which would be good and then it, like I said like it, he'll do the same activities it'll just be harder so um, later on in the year like she'll tell all the kids to write a sentence describing like an animal it's so, like elephant like I like elephants something like that and they'll just be tasked to do one sentence. But with Grayson, he will be tasked to do like 10 sentences instead of just one. So it made me feel really good that the teacher is going to work with Grayson and extend his learning and, and push him and challenge him. And he won't just be stagnant and bored. I was worried that, yeah, okay, he's already met his end of the year goals and he just basically has to, you know, sit there and not be challenged and just have to wait for everybody else to catch up to him but that is not the case and I'm really glad he has the teacher that he does she is like this is her 20 something year of teaching she seems very like matter of fact very knowledgeable very up to the challenge of challenging Grayson um she was telling me like I have tricks up my sleeve I am um, ready to take this challenge on and to pull different things out of my hat to keep Grayson um, entertained. So I felt really good about that. She said um, <laughs> he obviously knows all the sight words because he can read. And so every so often she introduces a new sight word to the class and they're supposed to just yell it out if they recognize what the word is. And so she'll tell Grayson like, okay, Grayson, we're going to um, introduce a new sight word to the class, but I want you to stay quiet and I want you to look around and see if anybody can guess what the sight word is. Kind of like 
make it a game for him and kind of like make him her buddy. It's just kind of funny that like that's what she has to do because otherwise Grayson would just like take over the whole class. So anyway, it was really good. I was worried it was going to be a lot more negative because Grayson can have some just different issues that he has um, socially and emotionally. But it was really mostly focused on how brilliant and bright he is. And I loved that. I loved hearing that. I mean, what parent doesn't love hearing that their kid is super smart? So I feel really good at where he is, really good that they're going to push him and challenge him. And I think he's always just going to be kind of a step ahead of all the other kids. And this was not me growing up. This is all Anthony. Anthony was very smart when he was a younger. I mean, he's still smart now. I was more just average. And so I think Grayson got Anthony's smarts and is always just going to be a little bit ahead. I did hear from other moms that they don't start testing for gifted until third grade. So it's going to be a couple years before Grayson can actually be put into like legit like extra courses during the day that are like specifically made for kids that are smarter if you get my drift but I am encouraged knowing that his teacher is going to modify the activities for him so that he is challenged so all in all it was a really great visit it was only 15 minutes it went by super fast but I'm really happy with with everything with how it went so that was the end of that teacher conference is done and yeah, Grayson is very bright and is going to have a great year at school. He already is, has been having a great day. Every day he comes home and he says, I had an amazing day. So he loves school. I just wish he would tell me more about it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just sitting here. I'm watching my shows. I watch Survivor and Amazing Race. I'm a reality TV show junkie if you did not know that about me. So anyway, I'm going to get to my shows because I am kid free because they're all sleeping. I'm going to enjoy myself. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.